There are a few nuances in uh, laparoscopy and pregnancy that I hope to impart to you today. Um, most general surgeons will encounter a woman uh, with, uh, who's pregnant with an acute abdomen. It occurs in about one in every 500 cases. And I I'm going to specifically focus on cholecystitis and uh, acute appendicitis. There, of course, are uh, gynecologic things uh, like ectopic, ectopic pregnancies that are managed with a laparoscope, uh, but I won't focus on those. First thing I want to talk about is imaging in the pregnant patient. And this is always uh, oftentimes a, a cause of consternation, whether one ought to do a CT scan. And I will discuss some data later that uh, indicates that a delay in diagnosis is uh, much more del deleterious than is a, a CT scan. If you can use ultrasound, that is beneficial, but oftentimes that doesn't give you the answer that you need and is uh, use or operator dependent. Uh, we need to recognize that a CT scan is safe. It only gives about two rads if it's done under certain protocols, and a woman can accept five, five to 10 rads during her pregnancy. Uh, MR with gadolinium is also safe. And if you need to do a cholangiogram, you should do it. Uh, very low radiation risk and uh, could give you very beneficial information. Uh, so don't delay the diagnosis. Uh, get a CT scan if you need it. Uh, whether one ought to do uh, uh, laparoscopy during any stage of pregnancy is oftentimes debated. Uh, we used to think that only, this, only the second trimester was uh, appropriate for laparoscopy, but the current uh, data indicate that laparoscopy is safe during any trimester. There, of course, are special considerations for access. One has to consider the fundal height. Uh, if uh, you typically do uh, a periumbilical access, you have to uh, elevate that during the second and third trimester. Uh, if you have uh, any doubts as to where you should put your trocars, a uh, subcostal uh, location is beneficial. There are uh, some good studies out recently that uh, talk about when one ought to do a laparoscopic cholecystectomy during pregnancy. Again, we oftentimes uh, encounter these patients and uh, it may be tempting to delay the, the lap coli until after her pregnancy. Um, but the data indicate that uh, we probably ought to be doing the lap coli during her pregnancy ra rather than uh, postpartum. This is a study out of Northwestern that looked at 53 pregnant women with symptomatic gallstones. Most of them had their lap colis done after their pregnancy as would be the common trend. But those patients, uh, almost all of them had recurrent symptoms and about half of them had to come back into the hospital. Uh, so this group recommended uh, early surgical interve intervention for symptomatic gallstones during pregnancy. Positioning and access uh, is different in a pregnant patient, uh, probably no different during the first trimester. Second trimester, of course, we have to move uh, our access uh, to different locations. And uh, positioning should be altered in the second trimester and beyond. The patient should be in the decubitus position with the left side down. Um, and that alleviates the pressure on the cava and blood return to the, to the mother. Pneumoperitoneum uh, is another point of discussion whether we ought to raise or, raise or lower the, uh, the intra-abdominal pressure. Uh, if you can do it with a lower pressure, lower than 15 millimeters of mercury, why wouldn't we do it? Uh, but there are no data that indicate that uh, 15 millimeters of mercury is deleterious to the mother or to the, uh, to the fetus. Um, so if you could see at 10 or uh, 12 millimeters of mercury, I think it's beneficial and why not do it if it's not compromising the operation. Uh, of course, end tidal CO2 monitoring is mandatory in all operations. Uh, we also talk about fetal monitoring um, and whether we ought to call OB uh, for a patient who's pregnant uh, with, a, with an acute abdomen. Uh, most of the times, if you call them before 20 weeks, uh, they'll, they'll not respond. Uh, but um, if you have a patient in the middle of her second trimester and beyond, uh, they usually come to see the patient. Uh, their data indicates that, uh, indicate that uh, fetal monitoring, heart rate monitoring before the operation and after the operation is appropriate rather than continually. Uh, so that's most likely what, what you'll get. Preterm labor is defined as uh, regular contractions with dilation of the cervix. Uh, prior to 37 weeks of gestation. And of course that has uh, some 
uh, adverse outcomes, uh, depending on the data delivery, uh, worsens the younger the fetus is. So uh, preterm labor is especially germane in discussions of acute appendicitis. Uh, perforated appendicitis has a 12% risk of preterm labor, and that speaks to the, uh, to the uh, necessity of early diagnosis and appropriate diagnosis uh, for patients with an acute abdomen. Uh, delaying the diagnosis uh, until the patient perforates has a lot of consequences. Uncomplicated appendicitis, that is doing a, a negative appendectomy, approximate 3% risk of preterm labor. We'll talk about that a little more. Uh, as well as negative appendectomy, th these are surprising data, 10% risk uh, of preterm labor. Uh, much higher than um, uncomplicated appendicitis. And uh, probably uh, preterm labor is not related to the approach, so one can do a laparoscopic appendectomy and not risk uh, inducing preterm labor in most cases. Uh, but we'll talk a, a little bit more about fetal demise. Uh, there's a, a big study from California, pop population-based study of all inpatients over uh, seven years, 3,000 patients uh, who were pregnant who had appendectomy. There's no increased risk in preterm labor. Um, there is, however, uh, increased uh, risk of fetal demise in patients with both complicated appendicitis and uh, an operation for a normal appendix. If the odds ratio is one for an open, open appendix uh, in a, a standard appendicitis non-perforated uh, uh, of 1.0, so the odds ratio is 1.88 for a negative appendectomy and 2.69 uh, for complicated appendix, and that's for fetal demise. Uh, furthermore, fetal demise is higher uh, in patients with appendicitis who undergo laparoscopic appendectomy as opposed to open appendectomy. So if we break down the 14% the of the patients who had laparoscopic appendectomy, we see that there's a 7% risk of fetal loss with laparoscopy, 3% uh, risk, that's compared to 3% risk with an open appendix. And specifically in the laparoscopic patients, uh, for complicated appendix, 13% risk of, uh, of fetal loss. That's uh, a very high, one out of eight patients. Uh, normal appendix, 8%, uh, and, uh, which is higher than simple appendicitis. Uh, nobody knows the reasoning behind that. Maybe if uh, somebody in the audience can enlighten me on that. Uh, this is substantiated in a smaller study that showed uh, a risk of uh, preterm labor and fetal demise, specifically in the normal appendix patient. Uh, again, this speaks to the imperative nature of both a timely diagnosis and an accurate diagnosis. Uh, so don't be afraid to get a CT scan. It's, it's worth the two rads. Could save preterm labor and could save fetal demise. Uh, so I'll wrap it up uh, with a few points here. Laparoscopy is safe during any trimester. Um, there, uh, there are good data to support that. Uh, so don't withhold uh, laparoscopy. The patients can benefit uh, lesser pain, uh, less, less physiologic insult, shorter length of stay. There, are, of course, are special considerations for positioning and access uh, that we talked about that are pretty common sense. Uh, I will emphasize again that there's a need for a timely and accurate diagnosis uh, to reduce fetal and maternal <coughs> complications. And then finally, uh, these are relatively new data, but something that we should consider that if you have a patient who's pregnant with acute appendicitis and you have an accurate diagnosis, there is a consideration for a laparoscopic or an open appendectomy, open appendectomy over a laparoscopic appendectomy. The, the uh, data are uh, still out on that, but it is a consideration going forward. Thank you very much. Quick, uh, one quick follow-up question: Is uh, IV contrast okay on CT scans in pregnant patients? Yes. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. Quick raise of hand: Who who would do a laparoscopic appendectomy in a pregnant patient? So, sure, as with any study, there are probably flaws. We need to maybe uh, critically pull that one apart, but certainly new information.